It's time for the Giz Whiz with Mads Maddest Rider, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1648, recorded Thursday, November 9th, 2017. Color me pink mustache. On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have two gadgets from Playfair. Also, we review the iPhone 10. Don't call it the iPhone X. And an all-new gadget warehouse all next on the Gizwiz! It's the Sam Dunn Show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing, growing LEDs. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. now. Now, and here he is, the guy you go and see at the Gadget Genius Bar, Dick D. Bartolo. <laughs> How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing super, sir. And you? I'm doing great myself. We're, we're starting to get, you know, deep into fall, and it's getting cold and rainy here in Dallas. You know what? Are you, do you have a tattoo? <laughs> no. So I did a post Halloween <laughs> Halloween stream and one of the incentives was to put a temporary tattoo on me if you subscribed on Twitch. So I, oh, oh, okay. I still happen to have some witches and pumpkins um, on my arm here from, uh, from that stream. So it was, it was, I think it was a pretty uh, effective incentive to get people to subscribe because uh, they've seen, I've been explaining these all week to um, various shop owners and uh <laughs> you know cashiers and just you know random people well, obviously they're not too temporary if they <laughs> no. haven't come off yet they're oh a little gosh. more permanent than uh yeah i, I would have originally guessed yeah <laughs> more, more than a week <laughs> exactly so um how what did you do over the over the last oh well you time? know today was ces unveiled which is a fun event which is where uh, some of the products that uh, have won awards at CE 2018 were on display. And I often wondered at CES when you walked by a booth and they had this big gold plaque, you know, we won an innovation award. And I'm thinking, wait, the show opened 20 minutes ago. Yeah, how, how did, did that you get that? Happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the awards are announced today or a couple of days earlier than this so that companies that are going to CES can, you know, print up their brochures and all, all of that stuff. So I, I did get to see new stuff. One of them w is very exciting. I had to kind of rush through it to get back to uh, record the show, but I'll just tell you what it is. I can't even remember the name of it, but it's not coming out till I think she said summer 2018, but it's a pair of earbuds, wireless earbuds, right? You put one in your ear, you give uh -huh. one to a friend. This is, this is great when you're traveling. Right. You go into your phone app. You say, I want to hear whatever conversation is spoken in English. Oh, my gosh. And you say, the person that I'm talking to, it will be talking. And the woman said, any one of the 10 basic languages, you know, Spanish, German. And as they talk in their language... She said, there's a, a, a multi-second pause, but then you will hear the English translation of it. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? That's so like sci-fi made real. I yes, mean, yes. You can't get any yeah. cooler than that. That's no, incredible. so they said they'll actually be demonstrating it at CES, so that's certainly one thing that I'll be covering uh, when I get there. What, I yeah. forget which movie it was. Uh, they called it The, the Babblefish. Um, that now th this Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You'd put a fish in your ear. I think that's what it was. <laughs> and then there was another one. I think it was Star Commander or something like that, where they had a little pin that you. I mean, this is absolutely out of science fiction. The idea that you could just hand someone a, a quick device and then the the language barrier is no more. That's crazy. Oh yeah, that's yeah, it, yeah. It, it's very funny. You know, in uh, the movie, I think it's Fly. The the dog has a collar. The dog talks. Oh yes, exactly. Yes, Remember yes, the yes, dog, yes. the dog, and it's oh, yes. I can talk squirrel. Perfectly. Yes, yeah. I hear everything through my collar. And squirrel. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. I can't wait to. Well, I don't know if I can wait to do it uh, with my cats because, you know, I always assume they're being cute, but there's a good chance that they are actually diabolical 
uh, little animals, you know, that they're plotting oh. my demise every moment of the day. Yeah, so. I would not trust a cat yeah. as far as you can throw the TriCaster. It's, it's maybe... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, that's a heavy thing, so you can't throw it very far. <laughs> yeah, right. um, so, yeah, I, I think maybe I'll just keep my cats mute if, uh, if that comes out. So, <laughs> very good. So, cool. We, anyway, this is an okay. interesting show today because um, I'm reviewing the iPhone... 10. Which I'm, I'm anxious to hear about that. Yeah. And I'm going to do, and, and I thought of a funny thing. Uh, my second gadget here is, uh, well, you'll see the video in a minute, but I'll just explain that I have two guests in the studio because uh, I asked the woman in the video, Sandra, if she invented it, and she said yes. And, and uh, my sister, who lives in Ohio, uh, uh, but I live in Manhattan, and I said where, and she said uh, on the Upper West Side, and I said where, and she said on 82nd Street. Oh, what? And I said, <laughs> I said, where on 82nd Street? She said, the corner of 82nd and West End. Oh, I my said, well, God. stop by because uh, you are about 300 feet from the studio. And that's so, amazing. Isn't that funny? That is isn't amazing. That yeah. Yeah, so, just walk yeah. outside. I'll walk outside, too, and we'll see each other. Yes. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly it. Uh, so the show is called uh, Fair Play. Or is it Fair? Play fair. Play fair. I keep getting back. Oh, I play fair uh, at the Javits Center. And last week we talked about Lego losing their license for the Lego bricks. Right. And here's another company they started. I think the guy said they started up in March of this year, uh, cashing in on the Lego brick availability. And let's see a video of what they're doing. Hey, Dick D. Martolo, Maz Metis writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. We're at Playfair, yet another toy event for the holidays. And so far, I just got here, but nothing is attracting me. Wait a minute, wait, oh, lights. Oh my God, I can't stop myself. There are LED lights, they are pulling me in. <sighs> we are safe, we have found LED lights. And we have found, is it Joe? Joe? We have found Joe, and the name of your company is? Uh, E-Blocks. E-Blocks, and I, I like what I'm seeing, but what are they? They are light-up bricks. So you get a battery pack, um, which you can see on the back of this one here. It has a standard 9-volt battery in it. And when you create a circuit with our plated bricks, with our plated and tin, and there's LEDs available, and then when you turn it on, you can create circuits and light, light up your builds. So in other words, one battery pack you can light up. Like, is this building is this building more than one? This actually has two battery packs on it. This building also has only two battery packs on it. So it depends on how you uh, create your circuits. If you do them in parallel or serial, ser um, because then um, you can get more power out of one battery pack. So these builds that you see down here, those are just one battery pack that will power those. Okay, and, and then how are they sold? In a, in a kit or? They are in different kits. We have different size kits. There's uh, anywhere from a starter set to a deluxe. Do you have a kit here on the table that we can see? Yes, we do. Right down here, we've got a, um, a standard set, which comes in a nice case. When you open the case up, you've got your plated bricks, which are plated in tin. Now, now the plated bricks you connect together, and they will be carrying the current between LEDs? Correct, okay. yes. The plated bricks are like wires you know, to call, carry your electricity, the current, and you got your battery brick, your standard nine volt battery you put in there, and uh, different LEDs, and then that's one set. There's a- And what does that set cost? Uh, this set is, uh, retails at $54.99. Uh, $54 okay, and then- and The uh, uh, advanced set here has more LEDs, different LEDs, more plated parts, and- I'm looking at cover up. Yep, and that one it retails for uh, 109 one 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 oh nine ninety nine. And we'll be, when nine volt battery, there's no voltage here for kids can play with this all day. Oh yeah, yeah. There's no no safety issues. Our actually our battery pack has a safety circuit in it, so that if you create a circuit a, a short circuit, a beeper goes on, and so you can hear that you have that short circuit, and then you can redo your circuit so that it's not shorting. And uh, they're on the market now. They're on the market now. Yes. Yep. And your website is? Uh, www.myeblocks.com. Uh, eblocks.com. Dick DiBartolo, Mads Medist writer, and the Gizwiz One Take Theater here at gizwiz.tv. 
Anything with LEDs, oh my gosh, we have to stop. That looks yes. neat, I, I gotta say. Um, it's very it's very clever. Well, interesting thing though is that they sort of say, uh, I, I say, and, and this you can build it with Lego, and they always go, yes, you can build it with Lego. They, <laughs> They're still, they're still sort of afraid that they're, somehow. Yeah, you say Lego, and they go, "Oh yeah, any any building block, uh, uh, any you know, building any, block, any building yeah, block." Yeah, yeah. yeah, but like specifically Lego, uh, <laughs> any 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 block, any, any, <laughs> any type of block. shaped like that. Yeah, 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 any of those normal blocks that you think, just not Playmobil, yes. okay? Just <laughs> anything that's not Playmobil. Yeah, it'll work with that. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Um, uh, it's uh, yes, they have fun things, and they have a, another series of kits called uh, E Block Stories, where you can build like a ship, and the ship uh, has it's the running lights like it should, oh, cool. uh, the bow light, the the uh, uh, starboard and port lights, red and green. Yeah, it, it's a it's a, a fun concept. Yeah, I, I like them. I I think that. I mean, one of my favorite things was, I think, Capsella's when I was younger. And I love that it had electricity, you know, and, and that you could actually learn a little bit about currents and how everything was working. And if you put it on this way, it wouldn't work. And, you know, another way it would. So there you go. Mm -hmm. E-blocks. Well, you, so you, you grew up when companies were already worrying that the government was going to say something. Like when I was a kid, I would have something and I would say, now... Is there a, some sort of a warning if I wire this wrong? And the guy said, yeah, you'll be electrocuted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I said, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. he said, yeah. He yeah. said, they, they used to sell, yeah. Exactly. He said, you may not die, but you will have no hair. <laughs> It'll hurt a lot. It'll hurt. Let me tell you. Yeah, <laughs> this is how you learn. Yeah, no. When I was when I was around, yeah, it was not, anything more than a single AA battery was, was bad. When, when yeah, I, I believe, my guess is, is uh, with the toys uh, a lot that you play with, they plug right into the wall. I mean, just... Oh, my, yes! <laughs> yes! I remember one of my favorite comedians has a story about lawn darts and the instructions available with lawn darts. And literally, they're just big javelins with a hoop, and you try to get it into the hoop, and the... The, the instructions read that you would lay the hoop at your feet and your friend would throw a dart at the hoop. If they missed, <laughs> they'd hit you right in the, you know. Right, so, right. Uh, yeah, things have changed just a little bit, definitely. Yeah. Um, uh, so e-blocks, yeah, so e-blocks look good. That, e that e looks blocks. fun. E -blo Myeblocks.com. Uh, okay, so now Sandra, who's sitting next to me here, is one of the inventors. You'll see her in the video. And... Uh, the name of her company is Chalk of the Town, a play on Talk of the Town. So let's see the video. Hey, Dixie Bartolo, Mads, Madness Driver, and the Gizwiz, One Take Theater. Oh, I just lost my shirt. I lost my shirt. Normally, normally I lose my shirt at CES in Vegas, but <laughs> this is pretty neat. Let me just show you again. So the only reason I have a pink mustache, I'm not competing with uh, OMG Chad, <laughs> yeah, hey. uh, is that we could not find a red marker. But the, uh, the, the name of the company attracted me to it. It's called Chalk of the Town. And we found somebody here who I believe invented it. Yes, I did. my sister and I came up with this idea of a t-shirt you can draw on, not with messy, smudgy chalk, but with precise, colorful chalk markers. Oh, okay, you know what, let's, uh, Dennis, let's walk over and talk in front of this uh, assortment of, of uh, shirts. So how long, uh, you want me back here? So how long from the time you and your sister thought of this to actually having shirts that you could sell did it take? <laughs> Two years. Two years, okay, uh, and a lot of money? Um, not a lot of money, a lot of sweat equity. There was a lot of um, trial and error and testing and trying. But we also were working on a, another similar business at the same time. So, so that was helpful. Oh, that made it easier. And the only reason I, I ask is that um, I used to do a, a, a spot for uh, CNBC on steals and deals where people showed us inventions, but a lot of them were in for half a million dollars. You know, no, okay, so it was less for you. And now, how are they being sold? Um, the shirts are being sold right now at retail, packaged with one chalk marker, one stencil, and a cloth. And, and then, is there a way to get the chalk back off? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You use water on the cloth and wipe it off. 
or you turn it inside out and throw it in the washing machine and the ink is water-based so it just disappears in the washing machine. Okay, now suppose someone draws an incredible design that they want to keep. Will it stay on for a while or will it slowly wear off? Well, you could leave it on as long as you don't uh, throw the shirt in the washing machine. So some of these shirts, um, like this cat shirt, we love, we drew it about a year ago and uh, it still lives on. I think I have it right here. <laughs> because everyone loved this design. Oh, there it so is. So we've had this for about a year, and I could take water and wash it off if I want to, but we like it so much, we've kept it. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, let, let's, uh, we're going to walk over here. Okay. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, they had a little demo booth. That's Okay. Cool. All right, very good. So we're going over to the demo table. Oh, you want to wash that off? Yeah, this is a, oh, okay. a, a sweet design. Okay, very good. Before, right. Oh, you know, it's very funny because this guy came by before. He had, uh, Picasso, I think he said. <laughs> and he drew that. So let's just wash that right I'll off. Little, this is just water. See? Water, okay. Just water. And now I'm just going to wipe it off. Look at that. Ta da! Oh, so, so the yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's, that's great. Yeah. And how many washings do you expect that the blackboard part will just come back and um, be writable or drawable? I have a friend whose kids have been using theirs for a year and a half, and they wear them every week. So you figure it, it's, it'll last a long time, definitely longer than it, the shirt will fit the child. Okay, okay. And we saw the package with the shirt and the crayon and the uh, erase cloth, and that will retail for how much? $28. $28. And people will find it where? Um, a, a number of different stores. Um, you can go to our website, www.chalk of the town.com. Okay, I'll see it on the screen. I'm lost already. What's your sister's name? Did we tell your sister's name? Uh, her name is Wendy Almasano, and she's based in Columbus, Ohio. Okay. So we do a lot of uh, FaceTiming during the day. And you're based in New York? I'm based in New York City. Perfect. I like it. Dick D. Bartolo, man's medicine writer, and the Gizwiz, one take theater here at gizwiz.tv. That's Chalk of the Town. I'm Talk of the Town. Bye. That's really cool. I, uh, Isn't I like, that neat? Yeah, I uh, like the idea you know that... What? I'm yeah. thinking we should have these. Yeah. Because uh, you can... If you're doing an event and you just want like six or eight people wearing something, you can just make them up. I like it. And, and then I'm going to ask Sandra one question. People in the chat room had two questions. One I can answer. They, uh, someone said... If you scrape your nails over the chalkboard, will you hear it? <laughs> no. You wouldn't no. you would hear a terrible sound. No. But the other question was, Sandra, uh, someone said, what happens if you wear it in the pouring rain? Will it think, erase yeah, yeah. or? Well, I'll tell you this. We wore some to a spin class to celebrate a birthday that I had. And believe it or not, they didn't run. Oh, in the spin class, everybody was sweating. Everyone, Everyone was sweating. sweating. Yeah, so okay, okay. So, torrential rain, I, it's not the greatest, but I okay. haven't had any complaints yet. Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, I, I think uh, our audience is smart enough that they would not walk in the torrential rain. Right. And we like to think that anyway, but we're, we're not sure. I like it. it seems very economical because, like, if you wanted a shirt that said, you know, happy birthday, grandma, you know, you could write that on there. And then the next week, happy gra birthday, grandpa. And then. Yeah, and you only have to the change next... the last two letters. Exactly. You only have to change yeah, very, the M very to the nice. Key. Yeah. Everyone That's thinks, perfect. wow, you just made this shirt just for me. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I did. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I ain't leaving it with you because I need it for nine other <laughs> no. birthdays. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, if you were, you know, if you were a uh, birthday magician or something like that, you know, that would be great. You come with the person's name All on your shirt to... every time. That's this is, a great idea. This is perfect. It's yeah, a no, great I think idea. If you're someone who does, uh, I mean, really, it's just, it's just cool. I mean, you could go to school. You know, I could see, you know, if I was younger and I was still going to. Uh, normal school. You go to school with a, you know, a design that you made that day. Next day, come with a different one. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that's great. And now, is it only kid sizes or is adult sizes Ad too? Adult sizes too, right? Uh, we've we've started making them in adult sizes. Uh, adult Perfect. sizes, okay. Are they the same price or are they more? Uh, you haven't priced it yet. <laughs> we haven't priced it yet. They haven't priced it yet. Okay, Perfect. adult sizes soon. 
Okay. That's great. So uh, chalk of the town, put little dashes in between all those words, uh, dot com to find out more. And you can see some nice inspiration on there as well. Love it. That's Perfect. really cool. And I did, I did check uh, the locations. There's some stores in Dallas also selling them. So oh, excellent. Go excellent. out there and find that store. Very cool. Or uh, if you're on 82nd and West End, I'll give you her address. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, all right, so we're doing something different now is gadget number three. Look at who has an iPhone 10. I know. So I went ahead and got the iPhone 10. Uh, very happy with it so far. Uh, this is so, Apple's So you ordered it newest. online. I did. So that night, told- at midnight, I ordered the new phone. Um, and I they were sold out within 13 minutes, something like that. Uh, there were a few issues also through the ordering process of um, some people couldn't load the app. There's a whole bunch of different ways to order it. You can order it through a carrier, through Apple, through Apple's um, app. So they have the, the store, the web store at apple.com. But they also have an, an iPhone app that you can order things through. And I've always found that the iPhone app is the most solid, the easiest way to get in. And so that's what I was using. But it still took about three minutes after midnight uh, for the app to be able to purchase orders. And some people had issues all the way uh, until there weren't any more. Uh, well, now, when I say there weren't any more, there weren't any more that would arrive on their release day. Whenever they sell out, they push it back. So it would say ships in three to four weeks, ships in one to two months. So anyone... So how, how, how long from the time you ordered it <clears throat> to the time... It arrived. I get I get very emotional. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> oh man, those new <clears throat> iPhones, so uh, good. Yes, from the time you ordered it to the time you're able to actually get it. A week. It, it was a, uh, a week. Yeah, okay. exactly. And they do that. They you know they announce and they say there'll be uh, the the first uh, stores you know or you'll be able to pre-order you know at this time about a month later or something like that and then you'll be able to get it um, another week after that. Um, and Apple does a very good job of making it very easy to spend. A thousand dollars within seconds. Let me tell you, uh, they do a very, very good job. Well, you knew you knew when you ordered it, it was right. going to be. Did yeah. you spend more than that? Uh, I I went for the uh, two hundred and fifty six gigabyte model, so that model is a thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. Um, okay. The base model, the 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 easy, you know, the lowest model is sixty four gigabytes, and that's at nine hundred. And ninety nine dollars, so just at a thousand dollars. And remember that this is this is almost their next generation. They already have their, to them to Apple. They like or to their marketing team. The iPhone eight is really the current generation, and the iPhone ten or the iPhone X, whatever you want to call it, is almost like far. They're pushing the envelope. They're going further. They're trying things that they didn't want to try in the normal iPhone. So uh, that's how they are making it seem that they can charge more for the phone um, than okay. the iPhone 8. Obviously, it, it works. Because it works, because everybody wants this like phone. Cra- yeah, exactly. it's crazy. Um, so I, I went ahead and did that. I'm part of the uh, Apple Upgrade Program. So to me, my cost is a monthly cost of about $56 a month. Um, and that'll last for two years until the phone is paid off. Or I can upgrade to the next phone that I want to get in one year after 12 months of, of uh, those payments. So that's what I'm a part of. Um, and the uh, cool thing about that is you get Apple Care uh, in, in included. So let's talk about the phone. The biggest, biggest, biggest feature of this phone is that there is no home button and that the screen goes basically from the top of the phone to the bottom of the phone. My uh, my uh, product camera really isn't working all, out that great right now, so I'm going to use the, this this to uh, show it off. Um, so the phone itself looks pretty uh, incredible right now. I have a kind of a, a dark background on it, so let me pull up an app that'll be a little bit lighter. Here's the news app, and you can see that it's almost completely screened yeah. from, from top to bottom with that little itty-bitty notch at the top. That notch at the top is Face ID. Um, most people already know about this, but there, because there's no home button, there's no fingerprint sensor, so you have to use your face to unlock the phone. Um, and a lot of people were kind of upset about this notch in the beginning. I've found that through the almost two weeks now of using it, that notch totally disappears. It really shows up in photos because 
Normally in photos, there's nothing to see on the photo. It might be just a cool background or a clock or something. And so you kind of focus on that notch. But when you're using the phone, that completely disappears. I don't notice it at all. Um, and, and so I, I got to say that uh, the notch doesn't bother me at all. So because is no the face recognition yes. perfect every time? It's, well, it's not perfect every time, but it's really, really good. So when you unlock the phone, you can see that there's a little lock icon at the top of the phone. Uh, it's a little bit out of focus there. But when you look at the phone, that will switch to an unlock icon pretty oh my quickly. Gosh. Um, yeah. yeah, it works really well. And so, uh, and also it'll learn over time. So maybe the first few times that, uh, you lock and unlock your phone, it might take a few times. I did notice kind of, you have to position it sometimes, especially if you're like, say laying in bed and you have a pillow covering half your face and you're just kind of looking, you may have to move your head up. I don't find that too difficult because I found with uh, finger, you know, with the uh, fingerprint sensor, there's many times that my finger might be a little bit wet or I didn't press it just right and I had to redo it and ended up typing in my passcode. Anyway, so to me, I don't see a big difference between say the fingerprint sensor and face ID. There is one thing and that is that there's a lot of almost behavioral things that I have to remember because I got so used to clicking the home button once waiting for the fingerprint ID to recognize my fingerprint and then launch into the phone. Well, now you can't do that. Sometimes I, I find myself just looking at the lock screen, waiting for it to open. And then I forget that I have to swipe up in order to actually unlock the phone. So sometimes there's behavioral things that make me feel like it's running slow, but it's actually not. So because that home button is missing, there's all sorts of different things that that home button used to do that is missing now. So they've been replaced with other different uh, ways. So obviously to get home, which was the big point of the home button, now you just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and get home. If you want Siri, you used to uh, long press on the home button. Now you can press on the lock button and then that brings up Siri. Now, on the previous uh, phone, you'd long press on the home button to turn off the phone. So now you have to long press on the home button and the volume up key to get to turning off your phone. And so that's how you get to that. Also a fun feature, which is slightly terrifying if you don't know that it's about ready to happen. <laughs> if you keep long, if you keep pressing the volume up and the power button, it goes into SOS mode, which sounds like this. And if you hold it for three seconds, it calls 911 for you. So we don't <laughs> want to do that on the, on the air. Um, another big thing is that you would double tap the home button to get into multitasking. Now you have to swipe up and then uh, over. And it doesn't actually take that long to get to multitasking. Um, I was kind of worried about that. You can actually learn how to do that kind of quickly to get to your multitasking screen and, and get into multitasking. Uh, you used to uh, double tap and go into multitasking in order to force close apps and you used to be able to swipe up to force close apps. Well now swiping up takes you to the home. So that's changed as well. If you want to force close an app, you have to force touch on an app and then these little red uh, minus icons show up uh, in, uh, in the corner of every app. Yeah. And you can Th this still This seems swipe like a, uh, a steep learning curve. Did it, you it learn is. all that in minutes? It is. You know, I would say that it took me just about a day to get used to it. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. There's a lot that it seems like, oh my gosh, I'm just going to, I'm so used to using my phone. This is going to be such a difficult thing. It's going to be like relearning how to drive a car. Um, I don't find that at all. I'm, I'm completely falling into it within the, uh, the first few days. Um, everything seems nice and natural uh, at this point. Um, let me think, is there anything else? Uh, there's now portrait mode on the front facing and back facing ca camera. Uh, there was always, it was always on the back facing camera, but now it's on the front facing camera as well. And, or front facing camera. Um, and what's actually interesting, this is another maybe a little uh, side review, is that I actually have a case on this phone right now. I was just going to say, are you worried about all the stories? Yeah, so um, I, I elected breaking. to use a, uh, a Tozo case, T-O-Z-O -O case. And because I have Apple Care with the uh, payment plan that I am set up with, um, I'm not too, too worried about the back of the case. You, you know what? I was reading about Apple Care. I just, I just thought that that meant they just put a new screen on it. No. But yeah, they'll do everything. 
Yeah. Oh, for free? Oh, I, I no, 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 also- not for free. So if you break uh, either the back or the front um, glass, uh, oh my gosh, you're, I forget, you're, you're quizzing me. Uh, I was reading it. I, it, it's like hundreds of dollars, right? Well, the, I believe, oh my gosh, chat room, double check me on this. My first thought is it's around $30 to, um, to replace either of the glass panels. So the screen, if the screen breaks or the glass on the back breaks. If you drop your phone and it gets run over by a car and the logic board breaks in half and there's absolutely no way to recover the phone, that is what ends up costing $150. If it's just a screen replacement, it's less expensive. Uh, And I forget, yeah, without Apple Care, uh, it's really expensive. With Apple Care, it's $29. Oh, okay. Um, to, uh, to oh, that's oh, I throw it on the floor then. Let's see. Right, Let's exactly. See. Bam. <laughs> and at that cost, it's cheaper to replace the screen than it is Wait. to buy a thirty-dollar case, right? Wait, Bleak is saying it's five hundred dollars. This is not true. Uh, okay. Let me. So Apple Care in itself, if you're just going to get Apple Care Plus, that's a two hundred dollar cost, but it's obviously built in. To, oh, okay. Uh, there it is. There you go. Yeah, $29 for screen damage, right. 99 for any other. Yep. Okay, so I, that was I, even a little bit uh, high. Now Chase is saying, but $300 for the back cover. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't that know. Isn't, it's right here. So, uh, so Apple Care is $200 per year? Uh, no, that'd be $200 per device. Um, and But that's built as into As long as you have the device? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I believe oh, it lasts two good. years, actually, is... is Okay. You know what? You're quizzing me on thing that I did not. No, no, no. Oh, no. um, <laughs> only because when I saw what is it, Square Trade, the people that Amazon uses, said that it was the most breakable phone they ever tested. Yeah, and that's why I wondered yeah. about. Yeah, it's two years. Two years. Two uh, years. For oh, okay. Care. So, okay. and this is directly well, off the take, Apple. Take that case off that. <laughs> right. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, um, so here's exactly from for? the Apple Care page. Um, your iPhone. Uh, is includes two incidents of accidental damage coverage. So that is two, uh, two of either a screen breaking or your whole phone replacement. Okay, so you only get two okay. of those in the two years, um, and it is a service fee of twenty nine dollars for screen Whoa, damage. Nothing. Twenty nine dollars for screen damage and ninety nine dollars for any other damage, uh, plus applicable tax. Uh, you'll get oh, okay. 24-7 priority access to Apple Air, uh, experts via chat or phone as well. So my case, um, you might be able to see it just a bit, is that it is very thin. This is the thinnest case you could possibly buy. And really what I am hope, what I want this case for is for when I, I've dropped my phone many times. Hold and, all the pieces. <laughs> exactly right. I've dropped my <laughs> phone and it's scuffed, you know, and right. there's a big dent in the in the side or not even a dent, but just like obvious digs into the metal. And that's all I want to avoid uh, with this case. I'm not really worried about, this case will not save my phone from breaking any of the glass panels. There's two glass panels. The glass panel on the back enables Qi charging, so wireless charging, um, and then of course the glass panel on the front. So that's all my case is for, is just to stop those scuffs. Uh, This is an $8 case from uh, Amazon. Uh, Once again, that's Tozo, T-O-Z-O, is the case that I end up buying. And I find that it it doesn't add anything. Yeah, I think I I have one of those cases on my Galaxy. And yeah. it was about eight dollars. Yeah, exactly. So I, I love this case. Um, wireless charging is really, really, really cool. The fact that they built in wireless charging and they stuck to a standard that everyone else is using that's been in Android phones for years and years and years. Um, I'm really happy that they stuck with Qi charging because because now that and it's an Apple phone, it's gonna be mainstream and I can see Qi chargers showing up in airports, Qi chargers showing up in cars, Qi chargers showing up in your dining room table that you're going to buy next year. I mean, I can see Qi chargers coming out uh, in a lot more force now that iPhones, uh, Apple uh, iPhone 8 and the 10 both have Qi chargers. So, all in all, is there any other questions? And the other thing is, I think that a lot of our uh, audience is pretty informed uh, over... over, uh, They're informed this. and jealous. Oh, so Bleak says um, uh, the, it was five hundred dollars if you didn't have Apple Care. So fi- oh, when Bleak said okay. five hundred earlier, he was talking about non. Um, right. This is I don't know what this plastic uh, charger, Be- Becky. 
Um, does it bend? This is does, phone does not bend. It doesn't have bend gate like uh, the other <laughs> the other the other one that they yeah had. exactly. Um, yeah, this is Chad's in. This is Chad's not crappy corner. This is Chad's expensive corner um, <laughs> for a device. Um, all in all, I, I got to say that I've been pretty happy with Face ID. Um, I've been really happy with the phone. One big big thing is that how small it is. It's a big feature, but it's a small thing. Um, is that this is a much smaller phone than the eight, seven plus that I was working with before, but the screen is is technically. A little wider, or, and or the screen is is takes up more space, um, but the uh, phone itself is smaller. And I gotta say, I enjoy that. I thought I I for years before the the uh, pluses, I was all into the biggest phone you could possibly buy. With the seven plus, I was starting to get annoyed with how difficult it was to uh, operate sometimes. And I'm actually really glad that uh, this is a smaller phone in general. It it's. A lot nicer, uh, in uh, in my opinion. And that's it. Excellent. I guess. Excellent. Or the iPhone 10. Don't call it the iPhone X. Uh, 10, 10. It's the 10. Um, yeah. Uh, all in all, I, th I now let, let's go start go back to the price. It's a, it's probably the most expensive phone uh, out there at the moment, and I don't know how you. If you're not someone like me that absolutely needs the or needs absolutely wants uh, the <laughs> best, the you know the nicest, the fastest, the newest, um, I don't know how you convince someone that that price is needed at all. Um, I just knew that I was part of the upgrade program and I wanted the newest phone anyway, so uh, you get it. I don't know how you can justify it's that your business. Price. You need yeah. to you need to be flashy. For me, I can People justify it. People expect you to have that. I don't know how to justify it to others. You know, I don't know how to tell someone, oh, yeah, it's totally worth $1,200. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, but anyway, that, that is what it is. I guess you, you know the price. So you know what you're getting into. Uh, with that. I with that, funny. ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Chad's you know, Crappy you know, Bunch of one and hat chance. Chance. Crappy corner. <sighs> Get it. So this now month, at the other end of spending money. <laughs> I spent all my money on the iPhone, okay? I don't have much more money to spend on other gadgets. This month's theme is kitchen gadgets getting ready for Thanksgiving. So things that you might have in the kitchen. Um, I went out to a local store today to pick up uh, my gadget and I recorded a video on it. So, uh, me, from the past, take it away. Hey Diggy D, it's Chad and today's kitchen gadget is da -da -da -da, the Mini Maker Waffle. The Mini Maker Waffle. Um, this I actually bought at Bed Bath & Beyond. Anyone can go to Bed Bath & Beyond and pick this up and the cool thing is it's only Ten dollars, so just a ten dollar mini maker, mini waffle maker. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what we get. I heart mini, aw, it's like I heart the car. Mini. Wow, mini all that packaging for, for ten long, bucks. Long okay, I know. So you get a um, your product stuff. You get ooh, look at recipes on the classic, the classic waffle troubleshooting your waffle maker using it. Okay, we're not going to read any of those because we're smarter than those instructions, right? So, here is the maker itself. Itty bitty. Hot surface. Opens up. Very nice. Probably, you should clean this, but <laughs> we don't have time for that here at the Gizwiz. Okay, so we just plugged it in and the indicator light is on. You might be able to see it under there. Oh, the yeah. Light. Um, but once that indicator oh, light comes off, that means that <laughs> this has been heated to the optimal temperature. We'll spray it with some pan and get it working. Okay, Dick, so this has finally heated up. It only took about, I'd say, two minutes, uh, and the light turned off, so this should be preheated correctly. So let's go ahead and open her up. Ooh, steam. Uh, smells like burning plastic. That's great. <laughs> let's go ahead and spray it with some pan. There we go, all over, and it doesn't, in the instructions, we went ahead and, I, I went ahead and read them. Um, it doesn't say how much you're supposed to pour in here, or for how long, like how long it's supposed to cook for. So, 
uh, we're just gonna experiment a little bit and see uh, see what happens. So we'll be back once we feel like it's done. I don't know. Okay, so this has been in here for about a minute and a half. You can see the so blue light's still on, and it just turned off. It. That blue just light, light just, turned, just off. turned off. Oh, oh, okay, so it sort of told you it was it cooked? Almost, yeah. Ooh. Is it hot? Yeah, that steam pouring out of the waffle. Now, let's open it this oh, way. Oh, the handle's hot, too, right? Ooh, okay, okay so it still needs oh. a little bit of time in there, but yeah. it's looking really good. It's looking really, really good. Okay, so, so you could either take it out then or more, so leave it in. It's only really been in here for about two minutes, I would say, and it's looking pretty freaking good. Look at that. That is an adorable little waffle right there. Um, okay, let's, uh, this first waffle, we're just gonna, not gonna eat because that's a, like a new surface or whatever. We'll, we'll make one more and then eat that one. So, uh, it does, I left, I leave them in for about two minutes. It does just about correspond with the light turning off. Okay, our two minute timer just turned off. So let's check it again. Oh, perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, that's really good. Okay. Fresh waffle down. Let's go ahead and give it some syrup. Yeah, that last friend was holding waffles next to the waffle mints. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh my God, some syrup. Okay, perfect. Now let's test it out. Who knows about Well, now if the waffle tastes off, you're going to blame the machine. <laughs> instructions on how to make them in a waffle batter. Right. Okay, here we go. Yeah. It's good. Cooked all the way through. Um, it's a waffle. I mean, it's like exactly what I expected. Nothing went wrong in the process. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> okay, so the mini waffle maker was a success. I mean, wait, I should say, call it by its real name. The uh, mini maker waffle uh, was a success. I'm not sure why they named it the mini maker waffle. I don't know if there's a copyright claim on... on uh, the mini waffle maker. The, yeah, that is funny. Why may, name it the mini maker waffle? Um, but, it should be the mini waffle maker, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. Not mini maker oh, waffle. Oh, you know, it could be one of the things where the, the guy sent the thing out to the printer and the printer just got it backwards. I, that I would I would I would uh, totally believe that. Um, yeah. All in they all, said, oh, we'll fix it. We just have to sell two billion of yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. And, and, ah, ship it to Bed Bath and Beyond. They won't notice. <laughs> um, I'm actually really happy with this. This is a good ten dollar purchase. Um, it co cooks just fine. I was worried that it was going to maybe not cook all the way through or going to be difficult to understand. It's also... And I, also, you'll be eating waffles from now till about March to yeah. pay for that iPhone 10. Exactly. You know, you know, it just makes... I'm, I'm going to make dirt waffles in order to <laughs> cut down on the cost of the uh, batter. But I really... Uh, another convenient thing is that a normal Belgian waffle maker takes up a lot of space. And this yeah. makes pretty decent sized waffles for it being a mini waffle maker and only at ten dollars and it works just fine i gotta say i was actually really really impressed with the uh mini maker waffle um that i got at bed bath and beyond so um nice i would say this is a maybe not so crappy crappy corner with the uh mini maker waffle good things come in small packages it says uh on the box so yeah and i can also see for kids this is a perfect size. No, I think it's great. Even for adults. So, yeah. $10. Right. But kids, uh, parents should watch because the, the handle does get hot. You said, yes. Right? Yeah. And so it yes. was just, it was mostly wet that I was confused about. Oh, I was I afraid it was going to be hot. It actually really wasn't all that hot. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The uh, mini maker waffle. Now, it doesn't really have uh, cleaning instructions. I would... Um, it, th that was a, one weird thing. It didn't have any instructions on how long to bake the waffles or... Um, how much to pour in, like a fourth cup or anything like that. It didn't tell me that, but you, I was pretty easy to eyeball. Um, and also I didn't see any uh, cleaning instructions. So, uh, so there you go, the mini maker waffle. With that, we're not heading to the warehouse. We're gonna head on into the letter. Now, we're doing the letter. I'll tell you why in a minute. The letter is from someone who is always in the chat room, always missing the 151 bus, uh, Captain J. Uh, Captain J writes, Dear Dick and Chad, Chad showed how his studio works with the cameras and switcher. I was hoping Dick might show us his gear. Uh, and also, when he visits wonderful shows, what mic he uses, how he hooks up the camera, 
and maybe the software he uses. Um, any input from Chad would be appreciated. And Chad, thank you for showing the 3D printer review, Captain J. Thanks. So Captain J, I started uh, making a video, actually a list of the things I use for the show. And I realized as I looked for them on Amazon that almost everything I use is five to 12 years old. <laughs> So I just made it into a gadget warehouse, and you'll see why. Here it is. <laughs> they're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In this gadget warehouse. Hey, Dick D. Bartolo, Mads, Madness writer, and the Gizwiz. One take video here at gizwiz.tv. Uh, people often ask what kind of equipment I use at Disneyland to record my half of the Gizwiz show. And a as I was making a list, I realized this is more a gadget warehouse segment because it turns out pretty much everything I use is old, especially old when you consider their electronics. For example, the camera I use is the Logitech C5, uh, C615. I'm gonna uh, check my notes here. Actually, it's the Logitech 525. Now that came out in 2011, and it's one of the few Logitech cameras that can swivel. And it turns out they still make this camera Notice this very tricky professional swivel knob I have on here. You have to add that yourself by using a little screwdriver and a duct tape. Uh, the microphone is a PR40. And the PR40, believe it or not, goes back like 12 years. I believe it came out in either 2004 and it won uh, an award for, like, Best New uh, Electronic of the Year in 2005. So the PR40, the Heil PR40, still available, still a highly prized uh, professional microphone. The switcher is the Onyx Blackjack from Mackie. That's this little guy right here. And uh, that also is still being made. So I'm going to walk over now to my podium. Uh, that uh, Amazon said it was first on Amazon in 2007. Mic wow. That is in the LG G6, this is which is what we're using. And then someone else said, what do you use when you're out uh, at video shows? So at video shows, let me get my uh, tray uh, shows notes here so this is what we use and you can see we've been using it for a long time and it is the audio technica atr 2100 usb xlr mic now if you're using it on usb you might it might be hard to see here you can actually plug in a headset and monitor the sound live uh, it doesn't work that way when you're using it the way we're using it with a uh, smartphone as, as the uh, camera. So you have to buy a different adapter if you're going to do it with a smartphone. You buy this cable. This is, oh, by the way, all these notes and uh, links will be in the show notes. You buy this, which plugs into the back of the mic and converts it to the mini plug. And then this is a three segment and the new phones need a four segment. So you need to plug the mic into that and then into the phone to uh, get the correct pin connection. And then finally, we just used a little selfie stick and uh, we have two of them and there's one of them now that's, that's on the phone. So let's give a quick look here. So the Mackie Black Jack is still available. It's about a hundred dollars. You can actually, whoops, you can actually find it for a hundred dollars with shipping. Uh, this particular one is a hundred dollars with eight dollars and eighty-three cents shipping. Uh, so that is that. The Logitech. Let's go back. Let's go to the Logitech here. Uh, so this camera is dirt cheap. Okay, I guess it is the C six fifteen. 
and that's 40 bucks. You can pay $10 more, and there is a, I, I think mine is 720p. There's also a, uh, the uh, HD version of it for $10 more, 1080p. So that's the second device. Let's go up here again. And there's the Heil mic system, okay? That's $400, and it comes with the setup that I have. It comes with the uh, mic uh, suspension, comes with that desk uh, that hooks onto the desk there, and that whole system is $400. The Heil PR40, and then the final guy I showed you was... That's the one that we use out in the field, the Audio Technica ATR2100. And that guy is $65, Amazon's choice. Okay. Uh, so there, there's all the stuff I use at this end here at Disneyland, the new improved Disneyland. Um, if you're a fan of this show, you know that Mad Magazine is moving out of New York City. And all our display cases are being shipped to Birdbank. So I have gathered everything I had in my office. And the editor, John Ficarra, said, listen, I don't want half the stuff in my office. And they're not going to ship that stuff. So help yourself. So Disneyland 2.0 has a lot of brand new mad stuff. This is Dickie Bartolo, Mads Maddest Writer, and the Gizwiz. One take theater here at gizwiz.tv. Bye. That is a lot of equipment. It's, it's amazing how much uh, takes it takes to, to put on a show. Um, yeah, really a show cool. as bad as this. Imagine what professionals are using. I oh know. my gosh. Can you believe it? Yeah. Um, no, the, the great thing is we use professional equipment and we bring it down to our own yeah. level. To, to a dollar store uh, quality <laughs> prices. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we take four hundred dollar equipment and bring it down to the dollar store quality. I like that. That should be our slogan. There you go. One of our new slogans. A dollar store quality show. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, it, it, it. And what's I think interesting is that anyone can go out and get any of that equipment. The you know Onyx Blackjack, uh, the Mackie uh, Onyx Blackjack. I mean, that's been around for forever. Yes. Um, I'm using, for my audio, I'm using the H4N, which we talked about in a previous episode. That has been around for forever. Um, it doesn't seem like, you know, the basic audio technology, basic webcam technology has changed all that much uh, in the 10 years that it's been since it came out. So not too difficult to, uh, to go get. Um, very cool. Thanks so much for your letter, Captain Jay. And, uh, yes, Captain Jay. And uh, we're looking for more videos. Okay, I think there's one video from a viewer, but we're looking for more videos. And you should think about getting it in soon because once we're past December 15th, you'll, you can still get a mad uh, photo if you live in the U.S. But before December 15th, if we use your video, we're sending mad magazines and Alfred E. Newman pictures to the U.S. and Canada. But once mad closes, um, I have no more mail room. <laughs> I have no more key to the stock room to run in and say, I need 10 mads for my viewers. Uh, so get those videos in really fast. Uh, thank you so much. A Captain and it goes to mail at gizwiz.tv. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's the email up there on the super on there the screen. Uh, with that, hey, we want to give a big thanks to our patrons. Thank you so much, Patreon. Uh, and our patrons, patreon.com is a place for independent content creators to be supported by their audience like you guys. Patreon.com slash gizwiz is our Patreon page. Big thank you to you guys for supporting the show, uh, giving a little bit every episode. And seriously, it could just be a little bit. If you're thinking about supporting... A few cents. Doesn't even have to be a full dollar. Every show would really, really help out. Thank you, thank you, thank you to our Patreon supporters from the bottom of our heart. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, if you don't want to use Patreon because it's more of a reoccurring thing and you want to just give one time, there's a PayPal link on our website, gizwiz.tv. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you go to catch all of the previous episodes of Gizwiz and also subscribe to the show. Uh, Gizwiz.tv is also the place where you go if you want to catch the show live. 
We're live uh, just about every Thursday, uh, 4.30 Pacific. Oh, Sunday. next week it's Wednesday. Right. Next week it will be Wednesday. Uh, see these little uh, things up here at the top? Those will tell you if there's ever a schedule change. Oh, man, and the following week is Thanksgiving, so it'll not be Thursday. Right. So a uh, little bit of schedule change is coming up, folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> so ch check it out. Gizwiz.tv. Also, gizwiz.biz. That's Dick's sister site. Really, it's the mother site because uh, that's where it all started was gizwiz.biz. Uh, head on over to gizwiz.biz to see all the show notes that Dickie D wrote up about every single gadget and also the show notes for the uh, incredible uh, gadget warehouse. So check that out. And then also play What the Heck Is It? The game show on the site uh, where we are going to guess. We don't know what this gadget is, but you have to guess. You have to use your brain to figure it out. Uh, I, I actually, uh, you know what, before the show, I talked to Dick. I found out exactly what this <laughs> is. Um, this is a device for holding hot dogs. Uh, if you're on a low-carb diet, uh, you just put a hot dog right on the middle of there, and you, you know, you, if you want a hot dog without the bun, that's how you hold the hot dog to eat it. Uh, if you think you know what the gadget is, there's 12 Mad Magazines for correct answers. Actually, is, is it true? Have I... <laughs> No. No, you haven't. Oh, I'm not telling. Yeah. I'm not telling. We don't know. But we do. You, I think we're on to a million-dollar idea once this contest ends. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so get a guess in over at gizwiz.biz. There's an email there uh, on the page. With that, that about wraps it up for this episode of The Gizwiz. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. I'll be here.